Elizabeth Taylor says she can't remember a time when she wasn't famous. Famous for her acting, her illnesses, her friends, romances, husbands and divorces. Above all, for her incredible beauty, that an image after image has always been accentuated by fabulous jewelry. Elizabeth, I have never seen anything so magnificent as all of this jewelry. It's just staggering, not to mention what you're wearing. I acquired this about a month ago. Isn't really? It the most gorgeous. That, it's unbelievable. You bought this for yourself? Yeah. How nice for you. See? Yeah. You're so good to you. Well, there's nobody else around. <laughs> do people still go out and wear jewelry? Do you still wear this? Well, honey, I do. Dame Elizabeth Taylor for services to acting and to charity. Elizabeth, two years ago, you were given a great honor when Queen Elizabeth of England gave you the order of commander of the British Empire. She made you a dame. How'd you feel when you were named Dame Elizabeth? Well, I've always been abroad, so it wasn't too far a stretch. From abroad to a dame? Huh. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming Elizabeth Taylor. No longer a Hollywood leading lady, she has successfully transformed herself into a humanitarian and businesswoman. Using her iconic status, she has raised millions for AIDS research and made millions for herself selling her perfumes, the first white diamonds. Her latest venture is this book celebrating her jewelry collection, considered by many to be among the finest in the world. For two days, we were given a rare glimpse as trays and trays of diamonds, pearls, rubies, and emeralds were laid before us. What you are looking at is only about one-tenth of her collection. And as rich as these jewels are, so are the stories behind them. They are, in fact, a window into Elizabeth Taylor's extraordinary life. Some people collect antiques. Some people collect paintings. But your joy is jewelry. What fascinates you so about jewelry? Ah, the beauty, the, the perfection, God's workmanship. They're all from the ground. This red is from God. The ruby. And those green little things. The, uh, those green little things, those emeralds, those green little things. But it is one of the great collections, isn't it? I've been told. How could one person amass such a collection? Taylor's love affair with jewelry began as a child when she bought this costume brooch for her mother. As she grew up to become arguably the most beautiful woman in the world, the men in her life fed her insatiable passion for jewels, especially her third husband, Mike Todd, a larger-than-life Hollywood producer whom she married in 1957. One day, you were in your swimming pool when he came up to you and put around your neck the most magnificent gift, a diamond and ruby necklace. I've never seen anything like that in my life. I probably never will again. I mean, he was so generous, and he took such care of me. I felt so protected and loved. To win the two biggest prizes, in Hollywood in one year. This and mm. Mm, this. <laughs> he also gave her an antique diamond tiara, which she wore to the 1956 Academy Awards. Then tragedy. After only 13 months of marriage and one daughter together, Mike Todd was killed when his plane, the Liz, crashed. Taylor was devastated. His legacy to me was love. He taught me what love really meant. I can never be more far away from you than, than this. Some years later, she met her second great love, British actor Richard Burton, on the set of Cleopatra. Both were married at the time, and their very public affair became an international scandal. Unquestionably, their torrid relationship was one of the century's great romances. Describe him for young people now who may not remember him that well. Richard? Mm. Good. God, shame on you. Where's the camera? <laughs> right there. Shame on you. I'm mad for you. I Go to a video store and rent Anne of a Thousand Days. Rent Beckett. Rent Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. 
I want you to get yourself a little alert. I want a little life in you. Stop that! Pull yourself together. Ah. Richard Burton was a great actor. And a hunk. In 1964, they married. Throughout the 60s, the Burtons were the most celebrated couple on the planet. Their wild, jet-set lifestyle made them superstars before there was such a word. Burton showered his wife with spectacular jewels, including the famous 33-carat Krupp diamond. The Krupps were a German family that supplied munitions to the Nazis, and Taylor writes, quote, helped knock off millions of Jews. How perfect, she wrote, it would be if a nice Jewish girl like me were to own it. It was up for auction. Richard said, I'm going to get you that ring. I'm going to get you that ring. Look at it, the hypnotic beauty that pulls you in and doesn't let you go. Is it heavy, my dear? Would you like to try it? I would love to try it. OK. OK. Don't get any fingerprints oh. on it. Look at that. Get it in the light. Well, thanks a lot, Elizabeth. The interview's over. We'll just all go home. <laughs> Burton gave her other important historic pieces, like this 16th century Taj Mahal diamond necklace. Its original inscription reads, To my beloved Mahal. And on the back, look at the incredible detail. Here, the magnificent hieroglyphics on the King Farouk bracelet that belonged to an Egyptian king and the exquisite La Peregrina Pearl. It is one of the world's finest examples of a pear-shaped natural pearl and was once owned by Queen Mary Tudor of England. Shortly after you received that pearl, you had quite a scare. It disappeared. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Taylor and Burton were in a Las Vegas hotel room. As Elizabeth walked back and forth with the pearl around her neck, she suddenly realized it was missing. And there was nothing. nothing there. And I heard one of the puppies chewing a bone. And I thought, that's wrong. We don't give the puppies bones. And one of the puppies was going, and you could Eating hear the pearl. Sound, chewing on the pearl. <sighs> Thank God there are no scratches. Did you ever tell Richard? Weeks later, weeks later, Elizabeth, when you look back over that period of your life, remembering it in part from all of these magnificent jewels, what are your thoughts when you look back? How grand it was, how lucky I was that I was their guardian, their protector, and nobody could have enjoyed them or had more fun with them. But the jewels Burton rained on her couldn't calm the growing volatility between them. They married and divorced twice. I think we loved almost too hard. I think you become so much in the other person's pocket, in their mind, in their soul, that you begin to lose your own identity. Hard to understand, isn't it? Yeah, thank God I had it. Can you ever imagine having it again? Oh, God, no. When you're with a new man and you're wearing the jewelry given to you by other men, is it ever awkward or uncomfortable for the new man in your life? Mm, so I've been told. Yeah? What do you do about it? Encourage them to give me more. <laughs> Taylor has also lavished jewelry on herself, purchasing many of the pieces in her collection. You said in your book, I'm a pretty good con lady. So if the rest of us are paying retail, what's your secret? I don't pay retail. You don't pay retail. Oh, no. How do you get it for less? I see. And then the price comes down. I'm not sure the rest of us can do that. If it's a male salesman. <laughs> In recent years, her good friend Michael Jackson has also contributed to Taylor's treasure chest. His gifts include this diamond bracelet, watch, and this diamond necklace. Do you think that Michael Jackson is misunderstood? Yes, I do. He has been hurt by so many people. Why should he trust people? I think I'm the only person in his life that has not betrayed him. Today, Elizabeth Taylor's fragile health particularly her severe back pain and two hip replacements, has limited her movement. Last summer, she was also treated for a curable skin cancer.
But even at age 70, her legendary violet eyes still mesmerize and remind us of her hypnotic beauty. There is a famous photographer. He once said of you, whenever she set her heart on a man or a film role or a diamond, it was to be the only one in the world forever and ever. Once she had it in her sights, her hold on it was total and irreversible. Well, Dame Elizabeth, that just about sums it up. Well, I don't see how he could say such a thing, but I guess you could say that's true. <laughs>